Hey, this is RJ May, and you're watching Mr. Mario 2011. Hey, so what is going on everyone? It is me, Mr. Mario, and today I'm going to be showing you all this system right here. We're going to be playing around a little bit with it, and this is my Reset Glitched Hat uh, Trinity Slim. This is actually a system that I worked on for the uh, RGH Speed Install video, uh, and I also flashed a drive in it in my MXIC flashing tutorial as well. Uh, the reason why I'm messing around with this is because, as you can see right here, it has a legitimate uh, Cool Runner Rev C installed in it, and it's working quite well. I mean, this system ends up booting up within a few pulses. It can be either insta boot or it might be the second pulse it boots up. Uh, the longest I've ever waited for the system to boot up was maybe. 30, 45 seconds, something like that, which isn't even that bad, but most of the time, I mean, it will boot within two, three pulses max, so it is quite fast, but it does insta-boot quite a bit. But anyways, recently, I ended up getting a lot of clone chips. I got uh, some Rev-C chips and some Rev-D chips as well. Uh, now, in case you don't know, uh, the Rev-C, it's a clone. It's just, you know, a copy of the legitimate Rev-C right here that is being sold. You know, you can find it on eBay, all those other places. Uh, and then the Rev-D is actually a completely different chip. Uh, it is labeled as a Cool Runner. The Rev-D itself does not exist, so it is a copy of a chip that is not based off anything. <laughs> Essentially, the reason why the Rev-D exists is because it has, I believe I want to say it's a crystal, but it does have a crystal on it for the standby clock. So that is useful for Corona motherboards and all that. So if you're installing it in a Corona, for example, if you were installing a Rev-C right here in a Corona, you would have to install a crystal onto that. I really believe that. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. But you'd have to install a crystal onto that, so attach it to the Rev-C, and then install it into your Corona board. This one, the crystal itself, is put onto the chip itself. So that way, you don't have to worry about adding anything extra in. But if you're not working on a Corona, like me right here, uh, you could either use the crystal itself as a standby clock, or you could disable the crystal and use the standby clock, which is the orange wire from the motherboard itself. So what I was doing here was this system, it works pretty well. Uh, I didn't have to worry about the install or anything, but I wasn't sure about how these new chips worked. So what I did was for each chip, I ended up desoldering the wires off the chip that's installed in the board right now, and I solder them to the clone boards. And let's see how that all works out. So first off, let's go ahead and take a look at the fake Rev-C right here, or the clone board. As you can see, the uh, little board right there, which is, well, the chip itself, which is that black chip, which I think it's the Silink, I want to say, X-I-L-I-N-K, I, I want to say that's it. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's what it's going to be called, and I really can't see it on this picture, unfortunately. Uh, but the board itself still has the actual text and everything uh, from the manufacturer on it on the fake one. The fake one is on the bottom, the real one is on the top that is still soldered into my system. Uh, also, the clone board itself uh, isn't as rounded off and everything. It's a little more rougher around the edges and all that. Uh, you can kind of see it from the pads, from the edges and everything, uh, but it doesn't have the Cool Runner logo on the chip itself. Uh, it just has the uh, actual, you know, stock company name and everything uh, and all that information, which the legitimate ones would not have. Uh, you'll also look at the jumpers as well, and where it says JP at the bottom, there is a resistor there that is bridging the two jumper points uh, as opposed to them just being open or closed. So let's say you want to open them, you'd have to flood that resistor off the board itself. Uh, same thing with the 1, 2, and 3 points uh, on the bottom left of the board. Uh, if you look at the top board, you can see that they are all freely available, and I've bridged together points 2 and 3, while as on the clone board, there's a resistor there that is bridging points 2 and 3. So if I had to bridge points 1 and 2, I would have to flood that off there. Now, I was not using a cap on either of these, and the only other thing as well, uh, if you look to the right of the board, as you can see, the Team Executor logo looks looks a bit different. It does not say Cool Runner itself on there, uh, but overall, there's just a few things that are kind of, you know, iffy on the chip. Uh, for example, where it says Slim on the board itself, uh, the clone board, if you look up and you see that C5 resistor, you can see that the resistor is put on there crooked. Uh, even the read, uh, read input output, uh, the pins right there on the right, uh, they seem to be a little more crooked on the clone board as opposed to on the legitimate board as well too. And this is just covering a few of the things as well. I know people are going to point out more differences in the comments section, so overall when you see this, you're going to see that the actual build quality, how 
it looks uh, is a little bit subpar compared to the legitimate one. However, we're going to see how this actually performs because a chip can be butt ugly, but hey, if it can perform well, I really don't mind how it looks, especially since the system is going to be completely closed up. And here, as you can see, is the actual chip installed. Now, the reason why I still kept the legitimate chip on the bottom is due to the fact that I really didn't want to, you know, yank it off the motherboard or anything, especially since I use some uh, real strong double-sided adhesive, you know, uh, industrial almost type tape. It's more for houses and all that, so I really didn't want to remove anything off the motherboard. Uh, so right here, as you can see, the way I'm running it is I still have everything working properly in there, uh, but I took the anti-static bag that it came in and I just put it between the legitimate board and the clone board, so nothing is going to be touching. Uh, but this is the system opened up and booting and everything, so I show a few boots right here. As you can see, that first boot was very fast. Uh, I'm going to show a few more ones as well, and the boot times can vary a little bit, but they really don't vary that much, and honestly... I'll say this, this board actually really impressed me. Uh, I swear, this is a clone RevC board, and the thing performs just as well as my legitimate RevC. Uh, like, I would honestly say, you know, if I gave you a system with a clone RevC, like if it was this system right here, and I told you it was a real one, if you didn't open up the system or anything, you would think that it is a legitimate RevC installed in there. Uh, so this one so far gets a really good review from me. Uh, I've been impressed with it, and... This is just about a two minute video clip right here. The reason why I'm still showing this is just because I want to show, you know, the multiple boots and everything, you know, me turning off and on the system, showing you how fast it boots up. Uh, but it doesn't seem to have any issues really, which I was really impressed with. Uh, it's really from what I've seen, the big thing is the install itself. If you can install it right, that's what you're looking for. You don't want to do, you know, a sloppy install or anything because even Dope Owner and I have talked about this before. Uh, you can have a really, really good board, but if you do a really bad install, well, uh, the board's not going to perform properly, obviously. Uh, so we're getting to the end of the last boot sequence right here. But seems like there we go. Yep, and it booted up. So that third boot took longer, but as you can see, it still did not take that long. So let's go ahead and check out the Rev D. Alright, now as you can see, I have the legitimate Rev C lined up next to the Rev D. Now this one actually says Cool Runner if you look over at the right side of the board, and the pin out area is actually straight, so it's not all crooked and everything like it was on the Rev C. However, you can see this board is also longer because it does have that crystal installed on it, and there's a little resistor underneath. If you want to use the orange wire on this, which would be the B point, so you want to use the standard by clock on your system itself and you don't want to use the standby clock on the board all you need to do is flood off that resistor and it will stop working so you can disable it that way now this one has a few differences first off right out of the box uh, the jumper where it says JP is open and the uh, point one and two are actually bridged by a resistor as opposed to points two and three. Uh, so I actually do end up changing this later on in the configuration because with my actual board right there, the Trinity uh, motherboard, as you can see if you look at the top board, I had to bridge jumper and points two and three. Uh, I tried doing this default setup using the Rev D, and just like the way I did it with the legitimate Rev C, my console did not boot. So I did have to end up shorting together jumper and I had to uh, bridge together the two points for two and three. I'll be straight up though, when it came to the build quality and all that, um, it doesn't look that bad, but there was one thing that really concerned me. If you see like next to that crystal right there that's been added on, uh, if you see right underneath the word cap, this is on the clone board I'm looking at, there's a resistor that is completely crooked. I thought it was just my own Rev D, but I opened up a second Rev D and it looked the exact same. That black resistor was just crooked off that point and was barely hanging on. So I thought that might deter something from happening, but surprisingly, the board actually still worked. Let's go ahead and check this out. So as you can see right here, I have the Revision D installed. Uh, the only things I had to do, I had to change it up a little bit. As you can see, I kind of botched up the ground point right there, but I promise it still works. Uh, I made sure it was on slim, just like the previous one. I had to bridge together the jumper points, and I had to bridge together points 2 and 3 instead of points 1 and 2, and I did not install the orange wire. I did not solder the orange standby clock wire on here, because I really wanted to see how the standby clock that is built into the chip itself works. 
worked out. So let's go ahead and see how it boots. So my thoughts on this chip are a little bit mixed. I, I think it is a good proof of concept. I think it can serve a good purpose, but obviously you know just how I'm talking from the beginning. It sounds like I'm really gonna bash this chip. I'm really not, honestly. Um, it's just, at least for me, I noticed the times were either a hit or miss. So as you can see, that boot time right there was quite good. It took maybe two, three pulses, didn't take that long. Uh, and I did three boots on this video as well. So, you know, I waited ahead. I waited for, you know, the dashboard to come in, turned off the system, and turned it back on. Uh, but I noticed boot times on this can be anywhere from insta-boot to about a minute. Now, granted, I did not use the standby clock on my own motherboard. Some people might yell at me and be like, oh, well, you know, you should have just disabled the crystal on there and then soldered in the standby clock. You know, I really wanted to show the chip itself just working, you know, alone with its own clock that is built in because I want to see how reliable the clock on the Rev-D itself is. Uh, although you have to kind of take this into consideration too, the Rev-D is a clone of a board that doesn't exist. Uh, with the Cool Runners, they made Rev A, Rev B, Rev C, but they never did Rev D. Uh, that is where you know other things like the CR3 Lite, CR3 Pro, uh, the Crystal Expansion, all the other stuff uh, come into play, including like the CR4, anything like that. Uh, so as you can see right here, I'm just gonna keep talking through this, but it does take quite a while to boot on the second boot, but then the third boot from what I remember was quite fast, if not, you know, decently fast. Uh, so it really depends on the install as well too, but I felt like the Rev-D was just a tiny bit lacking, at least on this board. Uh, so I would recommend this more for Corona boards, and that's why I kept this on hand, just in case, you know, I have to mess with the Corona, anything like that, uh, I will be working with this. Uh, and I believe on the Corona, I do think that if there's not a standby clock you do, uh, I think that you do have to use both in conjunction. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, there are guides that you can look up on that, but I haven't tried it with a Corona or anything. Uh, that's another thing with the Rev-D as well, too. Uh, there's not really any solid install guides out available online because again this is a chip that's somewhere in the that came from somewhere in the bowels of china and it doesn't exist technically <laughs> but as you can see right here we just got two pulses on that short boot after that really long boot and uh it seemed to work out just fine so now i'll go ahead compare the two and uh, we'll i guess we'll kind of do a review of it all all right, so going from top to bottom, we have the legitimate Rev-C, then the Rev-D, and the clone Rev-C. What are my thoughts on these boards? Well, I have to say, with the clone Rev-C, I'm actually very impressed with it. Honestly, at least from my experience, it works just as well as my legitimate Rev-C. Like, I'm telling you all, as I said before, if I open up your system, install the clone Rev-C in there, closed it, you never opened it and I told you that it was a real Rev-C, you would believe me. Like, there wouldn't be any difference or anything like that. And really, all the Cool Runner does, honestly, is just boot up the board. It's not going to really affect anything while you're in the middle of gaming or anything like that. No, it just needed for that initial boot sequence. So, it does a lot, but at the same time, it does a little bit, I guess you can say. So, honestly, with the clone Rev-C... I'm very impressed with it, uh, especially since you really can't buy a legitimate Rev C's, Rev D's anymore for anybody who might be wondering why I'm buying clone boards or why, you know, I might be advocating this, anything like that. As I said, you can't get these things anymore. You can only get the clones. You can't get the legitimate ones anymore. Now, when it comes to the Rev D, granted, I only tried it with the crystal or the onboard crystal. That's what I wanted to do. But I thought this board was okay. Uh, I didn't think it was a horrible board, but I didn't think it was excellent by any means. Like, I thought the Rev-C was really good. And that might also be due to the fact that I was using standby clock off of my console's motherboard itself. And people might be asking why I didn't just install it onto the standby clock itself. As I said, I wanted to see how the actual board itself performed with the crystal on there. But anybody worried about the wiring or anything like that, it's wired exactly like a Rev-C. And then the crystal itself, if you want to use a standby clock on your console's motherboard, you have to take off that resistor. If you want to try it without the standby clock on your console, so you really just want to, you know, kind of avoid soldering that point or you're afraid to, just don't install the orange wire to your system. Uh, that would be the B point, And keep the resistor intact. Uh, but honestly, even for the crystal itself on there, I thought the clock was still pretty good for what it was. Uh, the only thing is, as I've told several people, like Dope Zone included and all that, the Rev-D is, it, it, it's, it's a bootleg of nothing. Um, as I said, they never made a Rev-D. 
a team executor, they made the Rev C, and they made the option where you could add on that crystal to the Rev C, but this is the Rev C with the add on installed into it, which is nice and convenient, but it's based off nothing really. So if you have issues with it, uh, there's really no documentation. Of course, there's not going to be any support or anything. But with all three of these boards right here, everything comes down to the install. Now, granted, I am going to say, you know, there have been bad fake clone boards out there. They've all There's also been bad legitimate boards out there as well, too. But when it comes down to the install, it doesn't matter if I have a $5 chip or a $500 chip, if that ever existed. If I botch the install, it's not going to perform at all. It's going to perform like a $0 chip. So really, that's all there is to it. Uh, some people might also be wondering why I'm trying to advocate or almost advertise uh, clone boards or anything like that. Look, I'm not trying to do that. The reason why I'm making this video and kind of showing the performance and an alternative is because that's really what it is. It's an alternative. You can't buy these boards brand new anymore. They haven't been in manufacturing off of legitimate team executor sites for a while. So you have to get the bootleg ones if you do want to get these chips brand new. As for where I got them, I end up getting these ones off eBay. You can find them on there. And honestly, compared to the price, I think the price difference is totally worth it. For the either same uh, configuration, same type support or minimal support, uh, or even, you know, performance that you're going to get. Uh, these chips right here, for example, if you get them in bulk, you can get them cheaper. A core runner itself is $20 normally. That's this manufacturer's suggested retail price. These clone chips right here, you can get for seven or $8 a piece. Big difference. And honestly, for the performance difference that you're going to get, I think it's worth that difference in cash. Anyways, this is Mr. Mario signing off. Thank you for watching, everyone. Let me know what y'all thought of this comparison.